Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the port security feature found on a number of our different Cisco Catalyst switches. Now, this is a very important topic. You start learning about port security all the way back in CCENT and the CCNA studies, and it follows with you all the way up through CCNP, CCIE. So really all the way up the Cisco certification ladder. So whether you're studying for your CCNA or your CCIE, you should gain some valuable information here from this video. Now obviously for the CCNA, you need to know a lot less, you need to know a lot more basic information than you would for your NP or your IE, but a little bit more information never hurt. And uh, like I say, this video should help you along every, uh, every certification level of your path. So let's jump in. Let's talk a little bit about the basic support security. So really what it is, is it's a switch security feature that allows us to limit the number of MAC addresses learned on a per port basis. Now there's a couple different things we can do here. We can tell the switch port that we want to limit the MAC addresses it learns to specific MAC addresses that we manually enter or we can tell it that we want to limit the port to some set number of dynamically learned MAC addresses. But really the bottom line is it's used to limit the number of what we call secure MAC addresses on a per port basis. There's a few ways to do that that we're going to talk about. Now why do we use it? It's used to protect against something called CAM overflow attacks or MAC address table attacks where basically the idea is when you send a frame to a Cisco switch, right, the port that the frame is coming in on, it's going to look at the source MAC address and it's going to add that MAC address into the CAM table or the MAC address table. So what an attacker could do is he could, he could keep sending packets with different spoofed source MAC addresses and end up over utilizing the resources of the switch. It's called a CAM overflow attack. So obviously if you limit the number of MAC addresses you can see on the port you can protect against that kind of attack. The other thing people usually use it for is to protect against end users plugging in rogue equipment like hubs or network switches. Now of course with switches if they're plugging in Cisco switches you could be using something like BPDU guard but what if they're using a just a dumb hub or a non Cisco switch that doesn't send a spanning tree BPDUs? Well port security might help you there. Obviously, if you've got a hub connected to your switch and there's, you know, 24 users off of that one switch port and that switch port is limited to only C1, you can have a port security violation and, you know, do what you choose. You could even shut the port down depending on what violation you configure. So that's really the basics of what port security gives us. Now let's talk about secure addresses. So when we configure port security on a port, Basically what that means is we're telling the port we're going to define a set number of secure MAC addresses that we want to see on this port. Now secure MAC addresses have three different flavors that we can work with here. First of all, the way you set the number of secure MAC addresses, you're going to use the switch port port security maximum command. So if I go into a port, I say switch port port security maximum 5. That means I can see up to five uh, secured MAC addresses on that port. Now, what kind of secured MAC addresses? That's where we get into these three things. Three different kinds. We can have static secure MAC addresses. That's where we go in with the switch port port security MAC address command, and we statically tell the switch port this particular MAC address or MAC addresses, depending on the maximum number you set, those are going to be secured. Anything other than those is not going to be a secured MAC address. So it lets you statically set them. Now when you run this command, that switch port port security MAC address command is going to be added to your running configuration. When you write your config, it will be saved in the startup configuration. So those are there basically until you get rid of them. Second version is dynamic, dynamic secured addresses. So with those, you're going to simply use the switch port port security command, and the switch is going to automatically or dynamically learn 
secure addresses on the port. So let's say we had switch port port security maximum 5 and then switch port port security. What the switch would do is it would learn up to 5 uh, automatically would learn up to five secure addresses and put them into the secured address table. Now with dynamic learning that stuff is not stored in the running config and thus will never be in the startup config so if you reboot your switch or you have a power outage and it needs to reload you're gonna lose that information and the switch is gonna have to relearn those addresses. Then you have sticky secure addresses which is sort of the best of both worlds. What happens with sticky, you're going to use the switch port port security MAC address sticky command. And what will happen is the switch will go ahead and dynamically learn the addresses, just like it did with our dynamic type. But the catch is it will then add that information into the running config. So when I say switch port port security MAC address sticky, and let's say my maximum number of addresses was two, it would go ahead and learn the first two MAC addresses and it would add a line into my port config that said switch port port security MAC address then the MAC address that it learned and then sticky so it adds it into the running config and when you write your config it goes into your startup configuration so port security violations well what happens if we go over the number of MAC addresses that we set aside with our switch port port security maximum command well then a violation is going to occur or it's going to say, okay, you broke the rules, now what am I going to do about it? And there's really three different types of violations. You've got protect, restrict, and shutdown. With protect, it's sort of the least severe because the only thing that's going to happen is frames that are coming from a MAC address that are not secured are just going to be dropped. They're not going to be forwarded. Restrict basically does the same thing, but there's three notable differences. Not only is it going to drop the frames, but it's going to log a syslog message. It's going to send an SNMP trap to a network monitoring station to alert you that you know there's this violation. And it's going to increase the violation counter when you look at the show port security CLI command. Then you've got shutdown. This is the default and the most severe. What will happen with a shutdown violation is the port basically gets shut down. It's moved to an error disabled state and can't forward anything. It's basically like shutting down the port. And you're going to configure which one you want with the switch port port security violation command. Port security aging timers. This has to do with, okay, once I learn a secured MAC address and I put it into this secured MAC address table, how long does it stay there? Well, by default, there is no aging. So once a MAC address gets added to that secure table, it will not age out of the secure table. Now if you shut down the port or something like that, that's a little bit different, but uh, as long as the port's up, it's never going to age out. Now there's two types of aging we can configure. There's absolute and there's inactivity. With absolute aging, what we do is we set an aging time, and after that amount of time, no matter what, the MAC address gets aged out of the table. With inactivity, we say after X amount of time of the port or of that MAC address not being active on the link, so if the machine's just sitting there but it's not sending frames, after X amount of inactivity time, then we age out the MAC address from the secured table. Now we configure it basically with two commands. First, you're going to say switch port port security aging time and give it that time in minutes. Then you're going to say switch port port security aging type and you're going to pick either absolute or inactivity. A couple subtleties with the aging timer that can slip right by you, especially up at the CCIE level when you're troubleshooting. First of all, like we said, aging is disabled by default. Once you do enable aging, then the default type is going to be that absolute type. Now, aging configuration by default will not affect static secure MAC addresses. So if I go ahead and I configure my absolute aging and I configure my aging timer and I have switch port port security MAC address with a statically defined MAC, that aging configuration is going to do absolutely nothing unless I add the command switch port port security aging static. Once I do that, then my static config will be aged out 
and after the aging timer expires, you will actually see that statically defined Mac removed from your config. Other big one is that aging will never, ever affect sticky secure Mac addresses. So the minute I say switch port port security Mac address sticky, and it learns the Mac addresses and adds them into my running config, no matter what you have configured for aging, those will never age out of your secure Mac address table. The only way to get rid of them at that point is to remove the command, or you can say clear port security eight, uh, clear port security sticky. Basically the way you would do it, but they're never going to age out on their own. Automatic recovery, big uh, topic, especially with the Cisco exams. They like to cover them. So with the shutdown violation, right, if I have a port security violation, my violation mode is shut down, and my port goes error disabled. Well, what sucks about that is you have to manually go into the switch now, and I have to do a shut, no shut, on the port that went error disabled in order to restore it and restore connectivity. Well, if you're managing a very large network where you have these port security violations happening all the time, it's going to be a real pain in the butt to go and manually manage all those shutdowns. So what we can do is automate it, and we use the error disable recovery command set on the switch. So basically what you're going to say is error disable recovery cause p secure violation, or port secure violation. And that's saying, hey, if the port goes error disabled because of this cause, then error disable recovery interval, I want to restore the port to normal status after X number of seconds. So again, if I go error disabled because of a port security violation, then automatically restore that port after X number of seconds. And that's our automatic recovery process. That's really about it for the port security uh, command set, feature set on the CAT switches. Again, this is Joe Astorino. Um, you can check out my blog over at astorinonetworks.com. I just finished a blog on this topic if you'd like to get a little bit of a different perspective. Of course, there's the YouTube channel, and you can follow me on Twitter at jastorino. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and keep studying hard.